Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Market Leader Power Hour. My name is Allison Engelbrecht, and I am really excited to be bringing you today's call on how to engage and convert leads from any source. This is going to be a really fun workshop, and I hope you guys are ready to kind of get into the nitty-gritty and follow along with me as I click through some of the specifics inside a Market Leader account and in some other accounts as well. So stay tuned. Keep your eyes peeled on the screen today because we're going to be actually going click by click through some things. What are we going to be focusing on? What are we going to be learning today? Well, focus first and foremost on the different lead sources that you can actually have creating contacts in your market leader system. Now, there's a couple of different ways that you can get contacts into your market leader system. I think most of you know how to add an individual contact into your system. We'll just show you real briefly where that is. Some of you might know that you can import a database into your system, so we'll briefly show you where that is as well. Very, very quick on those pieces, because I think you already know how to do that. Something that some of you may not know is that we actually have a way for your system, your market leader system, to talk to specific other lead sources. And when those leads are generated in places like Active Rain or on Trulia, those leads will actually create contact in your market leader system. So you don't have to manually import them. You don't have to worry about, hey, I need to type all this information in. So it makes it really, really nice. However, because you're getting leads from other sources, they do need a little different strategy when it comes to follow-up, right? All of the strategy that we've talked about and power hours and things like that, or a good portion of it, 90% of it, is all focused around contacts who have registered on your website. Now, if they don't register on your website, how do you change how you're speaking to them? Because you do need to change that, right? So what do you say in that initial contact? And I think you guys are going to be really excited with some of the stuff I'm going to be sending out in the post-class notes. We've got some templates for you today, some things to get started, some ideas on how you can customize that initial contact to fit your lead sources. Now, we're also going to be talking about the seven-day plan of attack, high level how it works, and does it apply here? Right? What kind of customizations do you need to do to the seven-day plan of attack to actually work with new lead sources? So we will be looking at that. And if you're kind of going, what is a seven-day plan of attack? Don't worry. We'll give you enough information so that you can say, ah, I got it. But we also can, if you're wanting 30 minutes on how that seven-day plan of attack works, we do have a great recording that was done by Jack Markham a couple of weeks ago. And it's very in-depth and detailed on the seven-day plan of attack. So we'll be kind of looking at that in a high-level format. So I want to start so everybody is coming from the same page, kind of understanding today's consumer. So thinking about, I just wanted to think, just put on your thinking cap just for a moment here. What are consumers looking for when they go online? Why do people start searching online? What are they looking for? Now, if you've noticed or if you read the NAR stats for 2013, you know that they're really looking for pictures and details about homes. Big surprise, we knew that, right? They're looking for school information. They're gathering all kinds of things around specific market conditions. They're also asking about what is the home buying and selling process like. It's pretty impressive that 42% of people start, the very first thing they do, the very, very first thing they do when they decide to go and buy a home is the first thing they go online. And the first thing that they're looking at is pictures of homes. OK, everybody raise their hand if you know a website of yours that has pictures of homes that is connected to the market, connected to your MLS, right? Everybody has that. It's a part of your market leader system. Now, the other thing that people are looking for, 14% of them, the first thing that they do is they go and they look at what the neighborhood is like. They go and they look at what does it take to buy or sell a home. I want to know what the process is. Now, I think for those of you who had your hand up, you can probably leave it up saying, hey, my website does that too. It's pretty amazing. It's already there. So the goal is to keep people on your site. And today, the website choices are just exponential, right? They can go anywhere. But what's the real difference? The content. Because I might go to one website and only get one or two of these things that we have up here in the top. Where are they going to go where they find everything? Because consumers are visiting seven or eight different websites 
before they actually talk to a real estate agent. Seven or eight different websites before they stop and say, I got what I needed. So the goal here is to take contacts and leads to engage them back to your site, get them connected to all of the information that you have so that they don't need to go to another place. So how do we do that? We need to connect those contacts to your market leader account. Because if you're generating leads from another source, the very first thing that we have to do is we have to let them know that you have a website that's going to solve all of their problems, going to answer all of their questions. It is the one true website that they need. It's that one-stop shop, right? They don't need to go anywhere else. So I want to take a quick poll here. Um, go ahead and just type it into the, the chat. How many of you are using another lead source other than a market leader source like Leads Direct or House Values? Go ahead and type in if you're using several. OK, Trulia, Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, Zillow, yes. Using several, four other sites. OK, we have a ton of people who are using other sites to generate leads. Now the question is, what are you doing with those leads? Are they getting put into your market leader system? Well, for most of you, you likely are, are saying, OK, great. I'm going to add them to my market leader system, and I am going to put them either one by one into my system by going into my contacts and clicking on Add a Contact. I can do one by one. I can add contacts. I can put all of the information in here. So if I create a contact here, I'm putting name, email address. I'm going down, and I'm saving this, and I'm adding a contact. Now, some of you are saying, hey, I've got too many contacts to do it one by one. So some of you are doing an Import-Export. Same area, Contacts, Import-Export. The nice thing about an import-export is that you can load up multiple contacts into your database at one time, right? Now, for those of you who are saying, wow, I didn't know that I could do this, the key to using the import-export feature is to download this custom import template right down here. Because this is how the import-export function works. And if you just add your information into the import-export template, the import template, then you can load it very, very easily into the market leader system. You just don't change anything. You save it to your desktop, and you start typing in, or you load the information into that template. Really, really simple. Then you can assign it to groups that you have already created to help you stay organized, or set them to a status, or set them to a contact type. Okay? All of these options are available. So the import process, which we're not going to go into specific detail. I'm not going to walk you through how to do an import, because I've got more exciting things to show you today. But the import process is right here. And if you take the time to just briefly read any of the information here, it'll tell you exactly how to do it. Okay. So for those of you who are saying, great, I've done that, but I'm using, another, I'm using other sources, right? Well, let's talk about those other sources. Because, let's see, some of these other sources will actually talk to your market leader system. So we had a ton of people that were telling me, hey, I'm using Trulia. Hey, I'm using Zillow. I blog on Active Rain. Fantastic. Did you know that your lead sources, those lead sources, can automatically create contacts in your market leader system? That's pretty fantastic. So you don't have to actually do a manual entry. You don't have to import those leads, because you can set your system up to do it right off the bat. So how does that work? Let's take a look at my Active Rate account. And we will take a look at how this specific function works. So I logged into my Active Rate account. Let me get rid of some of this little pieces down here. And I'm going to actually just click on my profile. So in your Active Rain account, you've got this widget over here on the side. And this is a completely customizable widget. You can ask it anything. I've specifically got suggestions for Market Leader Power Hour. We love to get suggestions. It makes our lives a little bit easier. If you ever have suggestions, you can find me on Active Rain and, and put in a suggestion for Market Leader Power Hour. But say you wanted to use this for 
hey, I'm looking, I want to really up my buyers. I really want to up my sellers. This is an opportunity for you to click Edit Profile. And you'll see you get this little edit icon. So you see this little pencil? When we click on the pencil, your screen comes up. And as you guys are loading here slowly for you, so sorry, I'm going to hang just a minute as, the, as everything updates. There we go. You'll see that it's called this lead widget. So the call to action could be looking to buy or sell a home. It could be um, there's more... Um, there's more buyers than inventory on the market. Are you interested in selling? Right? It could be anything you want. And this lead email is where that notification goes when you get a lead into your ActiveBrain account. So all you have to do is you just have to set that lead notification to go to your market leader website email. So the market leader website email. So if your email address, if your domain name for your website is www.searchingyourtown.com and the email address that's associated with that website is info at searchingyourtown.com. You put that info at searchingyourtown.com in as your lead email. So all those emails that go to that um, account are going to be read by your market leader system and it's going to create a contact record in your account. So I'm going to show you the Trulia version. So just so you guys have a different, so here's the blog side. I'm going to show you a Trulia version. And then we'll go in and we'll see what it looks like inside the Market Leader account so you guys can see what we're actually looking for. So in the Trulia version, you're going to log in. And let me just grab my login here. I don't type and talk well. <laughs> okay, so we log in, hopefully I typed everything correctly, and we can go up to the con your information, and we're going to go to profile. So same idea, we're going to the profile, we need to edit the profile. Now with Trulia, specifically, once you click on that profile, then you again want to edit that profile. So from the profile section, click the big yellow button that says edit profile and you'll get your edit option. And what we want to do is we want to go in and we want to edit the email and email addresses and Facebook content. So here I can add a new email address into this section here and all I need to do, here's my info at searching your town, is just click the radio for the lead section. So that's all you need to do, and then update your preferences. Now, any new contacts that come in through Trulia are going to go straight into your market leader system, and a contact record will be created. So for those of you who are saying, how did you get there? Again, it's under Profile, and then you Edit, and then it's Email Addresses and Facebook Content. So you can add a new email address right here, okay? And it will come into this section down here, and you choose which one it's going to be on the lead section, which one you want to receive that lead notification email. So now that we've seen what it looks like in Active Rain and Trulia, let's look at what it looks like in the market leader system when you get these emails. So it works the same as any lead. Your lead's going to come into your dashboard. Now, the thing about the lead coming into the dashboard is remember that these leads didn't actually go onto your website. So they haven't been searching for homes online. We don't know, you know, what type of home based on the initial email. The email address that's going to bring those leads into the account is your market leader website email. If you don't know what that email is, go to your admin section and click on My Account. Under Admin My Account in Settings, you want this CRM email. You can put this CRM email into your Zillow account. You can put the CRM email into your Realtor.com account. Trulia, RealtyNow, ActiveRain, this is the email that's going to send, um, that's going to receive in those lead notifications, and it's going to convert those lead notifications into a contact record. Okay. 
So when you get that contact record created, it looks just like any other lead that's in your account. So from your dashboard, you'll have a new contact. If you have lead notifications set up in your market leader account, like a, a text or um, an email set up, then those will go out to you. Everything works the same. Now the thing that you want to look for is on the dashboard in this new contact section, you're going to be looking at this name, looking in, average price. It all looks like zeros. Now initially you might say, oh, it's a dead lead. They didn't do anything. Well, they didn't get a chance to because they came in from another source. So it's a real opportunity for us to kind of reorient our thinking when we're looking at this dashboard to say, okay, where did this person come from? You can see that the new messages tell you where the, true, where the account came from. So this Adam Engelbrecht, my husband, came from Trulia. New lead from Trulia. This is a link to the very specific email that was sent from Trulia. It's the original email that was sent from Trulia. You've got the active rain, potential lead from active rain. It's the same thing. So if it's an active rain, Trulia, Zillow, Realtor.com, it will define out those leads for you. So now that we've received the leads in, what do we do with them, right? Because now we're talking about, hey, I need, I need to do something with them. I've got a Trulia lead coming in. I've got active rain. Each of these people is having a completely different experience when they're getting connected to you. We saw the active rain experience, right? They're on my blog. Maybe they're following some information that I'm doing about Kenmore, Kirkland, Finn Hill, and they're connecting with me saying, hey, you're an expert in this area. What can I expect to get for my home, right? Or I love this area. I'm really looking, I really would like to move here. So maybe they're connecting based off of that versus a Trulia where they've been searching on Trulia. They've been looking at homes for a while, and suddenly they connect with you and they send you a message. So with Zillow and Realtor.com and Realty Now, it's the same process. You know you go into your account, you find the email address that is designated as your lead, um, your lead notification email. So what email does your, do your lead notifications go to? And you just change that lead notification email to your market leader CRM, your market leader contact manager email. So now that we've gone and gotten our leads into our market leader system, how do you respond? Because if I've got a lead that's coming in from Trulia and they've been searching on Trulia without telling anybody about anything, right, because they're doing it all anonymous for six months, eight months, however long it takes them to actually connect with an agent, then that's a little bit different experience than somebody following my blog. So it's really, really important that we're able to tailor that message to that specific instance. But even more importantly than that is that you need to respond fast. Because this person hasn't connected with you really on your website. There, there, there's no draw to keep them from going to seven or eight different websites. Remember, from the beginning of our class, we were talking about these, these people are looking for information, and they're going to keep on going to other websites until they've fulfilled that need. So we need to have a way of getting them back to your website so that they can understand that they don't need to go to other websites. Because they haven't been on your site yet, we need to send them that information. We need to get them connected. So we need to respond fast. And this can be hard because you can't let your response time stink. I know it's hard. I know that a lot of agents will say, you know, I'm, I'm out with a client, I'm, I'm doing something, or I, I love the one, I'm sleeping. Yes, we know. Okay, so if you're sleeping, I get you. You got to pass on if you're sleeping. But 42% of your clients, their first step is to look at properties online. So if they're going online or if they're doing something, they're already out there searching. We can't let your response time stink. Okay, because we know that 14% of them, that you've got all this information, 14% are looking for information on the home buying process. All of this information is still on your website. They don't need to go out and Google it. And over the course of their search, 92% are going to be using the internet. 
So how many other websites are they going to go to if they don't know that yours is going to solve and answer all their questions? So you really, really have to be on top of these specific leads, obviously all leads. But why don't you guys give me a, give me a baseline. What do you think is a good response time? Go ahead and type that into the chat. I'm driving my chatters crazy right now by having you do this. <laughs> five minutes, 10 minutes, five minutes, immediate, one hour, two minutes. Wow, OK. Five, everybody, good, good answers. 30 minutes, ASAP, within the first hour. Immediate, immediate, excellent, fantastic. So I would challenge you that based on all of the different ways you can connect back to your market leader site, if you're getting your market leader leads into your CRM, your contact manager, if you're getting other lead sources into your contact manager, there's really no reason why, unless you're sleeping, that you shouldn't have an, an immediate response. Five to 10 minutes is fantastic. I would challenge you that if it takes longer for you to respond to a lead than it takes for me to order a pizza and have it delivered to my house, then that, that's potentially too long, right? If it takes more than 30 minutes, if, if, I, if I can order a pizza faster, hmm, I'm probably going to another website. You have the potential of losing me to another site. So I love the fact that most of you are saying immediate, five minutes is too late, two minutes is, two minutes is perfect, or don't creep them out, but you want to get back to them right away. A lot of these other lead sources are going to give you phone numbers. Now I know most agents are like, yay, phone numbers! You know, that, that's, part of their, that's part of what they're filling out in the form. Make the call. Do it. Make the call. You just need to make sure that you're tailoring that initial contact to, as one of our, one of our um, agents on the call has said, don't creep them out, right? So it's not about, hey, let's get you into the car. Hey, let's you know, sign a contract. Your goal is not to close them. Your goal is to service them. So what is the must-haves of a first contact? A thank you, right? We want to thank them for being a part of your business. Thank you for asking me for information. You need to make it personable and serviceable, right? This isn't about, hey, I'm going to make you jump through hoops to get this done. This is how can I help you? How can I make this easy for you? What can you do to think ahead of where they need to be? If you listen to our call with Jack on the 212 degrees, this is where you implement that. This is where you take it to that next level. You're not being salesy, right? This isn't about, let's close this. Let's go out and sign a contract. This is about finding that value proposition that's not revolved around you as being the most fantastic agent on the face of the earth, which you are. But it's about what is it that they're looking for online, and how are you going to be able to service them? So remember that list of things that we started out with. They're looking for homes. They're looking for pictures. They want neighborhood information. They want you know, to know more about the buying and selling process. That's the value proposition. That's what you're telling them they can get from you. And making it easy. I love the idea of offering to set up listing alerts for them in the next day or two. Maybe that works out for them. If you have enough information to do that, that's a fantastic idea. And it's actually a part of the seven-day plan of attack. So one thing that I love is the idea of Remember from the 80s, the Head & Shoulders commercial? You never get a second chance to make that first impression. You want to be their friend, right? This is about creating that working relationship. It's not a sales call. It's that working relationship. So here's a sample of what we call the quick email quick text. Now, you may remember message templates if you've been with Market Leader for a while. They're now called quick text, email quick text. And we've recently done a um, a quick call on how these work. We're going to walk through them just briefly today. But here's a sample. So let's look at this. My subject line up here has the thank you. And then I also say it again here. Thank you for contacting me through Trulia. I'm being very specific about where I got their information. Because remember, they don't know this email address. This is a new email address for them to receive information from me. I'm in, the pro I'm in the process of gathering information that you requested. Hey, great, I don't have to do anything. As a consumer, I'm like, whew, OK, cool. I'm just waiting for you to send me some information. 
Oh, wait, I have an action item. In the meantime, feel free to view my website and find all the current listings from my MLS. Hey, that's what I was looking for. 42% of people start their, their very first thing that they do is they go looking for homes. They want pictures. And then during their home search, 92% of people are online looking at homes anyway. So now I've got a direct access into the MLS. That's fantastic. We need to tell them that. We need to get them back to the website. My website will provide you with the opportunity to follow and save favorites. I love that, right? When I'm out looking for homes, I don't want to have to go back through a huge long list if I want to then show my husband, who is really picky about homes, right? And I can keep track of the home value. So now I'm hitting them with the pictures and the neighborhood information and what's, what the value of potentially my home might be. And here, we're taking the service to the next level. Expect an email shortly with the, the username and password. So I don't have to do anything. As a consumer, I'm being given all this information. And it's a, it's a pretty personable letter, I think. It's not super um, tech. Like it's, it doesn't look very formatted to me. It, it looks just kind of like you spent the time to type it out. Hi, Jane. I'm being real informal. Then you've also got the option here for some additional information. This is, again, a great template. I'm going to be sending this template out for all of you. So this is one of the templates that we'll be sending out as a quick text option. So we'll be sending a few templates for you guys to play with and kind of use as a jumping off point. Um, so make sure you fill out the, the survey at the end of the call so I can make sure to get this to you. Now once that initial quick text email, so this is your initial contact, then we want to ensure that that email has gone out. Right? We want to see that it's gone out in the system, and then follow that with the welcome email with the password. Now, how many of you knew that there was an automatic welcome email that you could send out? How many of you knew that Market Leader did that already for all of the leads that come in from your website? So this welcome email with password, you can customize this if you need to. The thing that you want to remember about this is that you want to keep it generic because I know a lot of you were telling me that you're generating leads from multiple sources. So if you're generating from Trulia and from Zillow, you don't want this welcome email to be specific to Trulia or specific to Zillow. You want to have the ability for it to go across brands, across sources. You can send it to a house value source. You can send it to an active rain source. You can send it to um, you know, an imported lead or one that you man met at Starbucks and it won't matter, right? The idea is that you're sending them the passwords so that they can get into your website. Because you know that people have to register, they have to be logged in, so that they can save their favorites, they can look at multiple homes. Well, they need that password. And it's not super pretty, but they can change it. It's this little password that's generated. It's only generated when the account is set up, and it has to be sent out in this welcome email. So you want to make sure that that email goes out and then it goes out after you've told them, I'm going to send you an email with, my, with your username and password. OK, so let's look, because some of you are saying, I don't know where to, to do that. Let's look at how that works and where it is. In your admin, under email, this is where you can customize both the quick text here and the welcome emails. So I said emails. There's two of them. Let's look at the emails first, since we the welcome emails, since we were just talking about that. You can see the default text for those people who've registered on your website. And this is all customizable. So again, you can customize it. You can change it. You can edit this. You can also do this for the manually entered leads. So these are going to be leads from other sources. Because leads from other sources are not going to be on your website before they register. And only leads that go on your register, that register on your website are going to get that top email. But you still have to get them some information. So you want to you wanna go with something generic, tell them why it's awesome, you know, what are they going to get for it. And it's not about you. It's about them. It's about what they are going to be able to do with this, right? Stopping that search by addressing why they're going online. Now, when you're doing your quick text email, so this is that initial email, 
Remember, we're doing the quick text actually before the welcome email. Seems a little backwards. But we need to give them an introduction to the market leader system because they didn't register a market leader. They registered on Active Rain. They registered on Trulia. They registered on Zillow. So we need to give them that introduction. So in this email quick text, you have the option of creating new. You may have some that are already built for you. If you don't have a whole lot or you say, hey, I need to build some more, great. You can create new right here. And you can add whatever quick text you want. It's just type and go. The title is for organization purposes only. So I'm going to say that again. The title of your quick text is for organizational purposes only. This does not have anything to do with something that the consumer might see. This is just so that you know which quick text to use when you're putting your emails together. Because hey, everybody, you can use multiple quick texts in an email. They kind of work like just a little little nugget of things that you can slide into an email to create something that is longer and more complex. So when I'm doing, if I'm using a, an initial quick text, so say I've got my active rain lead quick text, this is um, one of those pieces I'm being specific to active rain, just a couple word changes from maybe some of the other quick texts that I have as far as a brand new lead. I can go in and I can edit this, I can save this, and I can use this. Now, to use this, I'm going to go into my contacts. And I'm going to show you, we saw how to access the contacts from the dashboard. I'm going to show you how you can access the contacts also from the contact list under all contacts. There's a really cool way that you can do this. If you go into, if you know who it is, you can obviously do your name, email, all that. But if you do more search options, so for those of you who are, are not seeing my screen change a whole really fast, there's this little um, tab more search options, and the source right here. So this is my other lead source. So if I'm getting Zillow leads, I can type Zillow. If I'm getting Trulia leads, I can type Trulia. And all I do is I start putting in the name, and I select it, make sure that everything else is empty, and I click Search. And here are all my Trulia leads. Just another way for you guys to find leads if you're wanting to work specifically with one section. Now let's look at Jane Austen. Jane um, submitted her information yesterday, and we wanted to we want to send her an email. Now I already sent Jane an email, but I want to show you how it works. So I clicked on send email. So for those of you who are saying where where'd she find that? It's right here. Send email. And it automatically clicks the to button. Now, if I'm composing an email from another source or another place in the market leader system, I can always start typing her name in here, and it will automatically start the female, or I can use the two buttons to find her. The subject line, this is what she's going to see when it comes through her email. So thanks for finding me on Trulia, right? So I can type in whatever I want here, and I give it my own salutation. Hey, Jane. And then I can add in my quick text. So I'm going to use my truly a lead quick text. Boom. And you know what? I'm going to add in some additional stuff here. I'm just going to do a little bit of formatting. I'm going to I want to add something into this. I want to use another quick text, and I'm going to say phone number for contact seller. And this is just one that I put that I threw together. And then I'm just going to format it, just fix the formatting because I want them to be kind of together. So now I've got an email. Would have taken me a lot longer if I was trying to type this out, right? And I can combine different quick texts to make these emails more personal. If Jane didn't give me a phone number or if I tried the phone number and it didn't work, then I'm going to be using, is there a preferred phone number? Right? Do you, do you have a number that you'd prefer that I use? Because I already tried your other one, right? I'm not saying that. I already tried your other one and it didn't work. So I'm using this preferred phone number option. And then I just click Send Now. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to click Send Now. And my information's queued to send. 
So you want to give it maybe five minutes or so, give it a little bit of time to actually send out. But you can also just double check down here at the bottom. So if I scroll down, I can look at all of my emails. And you can see that, yep, it's already gone out. It was really quick. Not a lot of stuff in the, in the pipeline right now. And I have sent out the welcome email. I did this yesterday, right? And hey, guess what? She opened them already. That's pretty fancy, right? So now I know that not only did she get my introductory email and she got my welcome email, so she knows how to get onto my website. She has that link. She's opened them. She may not have clicked on any of the links in my emails. Doesn't look like she's clicked on any of the links inside. That's what this one is for. But she did open them, so she knows maybe she's safe in them. So it gives you an option to be able to kind of keep track of what's happening with that contact. So I can do that with any of my contacts, right? So this is specifically for my Truly. If I'm doing Active Rain, I would focus on the Active Rain. If I'm doing Zillow, I'm focusing on how did they get to me? Because they know they don't know anything about my website. I don't want them to go back to Zillow. I don't want them to find another agent. I want them to stay on my site. I want them to come back to my site. So let's look at how you can be their Google. I love this phrase. It's not my phrase. I wish it was my phrase. Be their Google. What does that mean to you? Be their Google, right? If we think back to that first slide that we did today and we were looking at what everything, what all those pieces are that clients are looking, prospects are looking for, leads are looking for when they're going online, You've already got all that on your website, so be there, Google. Let them know that that's where they need to go, right? So this is a, a slide that you may have seen before. What is your number one goal with every new lead? What is it? I've already let slip today, so you guys should have the answer. Or if you're a part of MDP, you know the answer there. If you listen to Jack, what is your number one goal with every lead? Perfect. Everybody, perfect. Get them back to your website. Get them back to your website. You want them to stop their search, right? That's what, it's, that's what it's all about, being their Google. With leads coming from other sources, they need you to help them get back to your website because they haven't been there yet. They don't know anything about it. You have to be able to find a way to connect with them via email, via phone, picking up that phone saying, hey, did you know that I have a great website and I know you're looking for homes and I'd love to be able to help you. So if you go online, here's how you get all the information from the local MLS. Keep you up to date. I can even send you the most recent things as they come on the market. Wouldn't that be awesome? Now they, you've stopped their search. You are their Google. So what is the seven day plan of attack? Number one, sending off those recommended listings, okay? Now, some of you are going to say, but I don't have the information to send the recommended listings. Okay. If you don't, you don't. But some of you may have additional information in the other sources, right? An email with a lead notification saying you have a brand new lead is usually going to give you name and email and a phone number. It doesn't usually give you all of the details, but sometimes it does. On a Trulia lead, for example, or an active rain lead, it gives them a spot to type in more information. So sometimes they might say, hey, I'm looking in Bellevue. Or, hey, I have a home to sell. I've got a 1978 split level uh, four bedroom house in Finn Hill. You know, what am I going to be looking at? How can I do that? Send them recommended listings. Hey, here are some properties that are in your neighborhood. It's almost like a little live mini CMA. As long as we're saying that in the email, hey, I put together some homes that are similar to yours. They'll give you an idea of what the value of your home is worth. Or, hey, if you're looking to buy in this area, here's some homes that might be interesting to you. I'd love to set you up on a listing alert with the, very, the most specific listings that fit your criteria. Sending them those recommended listings on day one. Now, the, the day three is the next in the seven-day plan of attack. So that's the Market Insider. Now, I know we might have some Canadian agents on the phone. I'm really, really sorry, because I know we don't have it in Canada. Um, but for the most part, our US customers, um, if you're not using Market Insider, 
then you're missing out. You're missing out on a great opportunity. Now, if you go in and you sign somebody up for Market Insider, it's going to take about seven days for them to get the first email. But if you create a quick text email that says, hey, I put together some information about the neighborhood, about the community for you, check out this page. You can send them a link to your Market Insider, and they can access that Market Insider information there. So let's look at how you would do that. If I go to Market Insider, I, insta I can change the zip code right here, do 98028, because that's where I live and it's awesome. Up here is the link that you want to get. Do you see this, everybody? Might be taking a little bit of time. I've got it highlighted. It's the address bar. It's the URL. So audiences, you guys are kind of about 50-50 on seeing what I'm seeing. OK, getting better. Do you see this? I've got it highlighted up here in the top of the screen. Searching your town, min market, zip. That's the URL that I'm going to send them. That's the link that I'm going to send them. You put that link into an email, a quick text email, and all of a sudden you have a link straight to your Market Insider, which is going to engage them. It's going to give them an opportunity to log in. Maybe you want to send them community information. You just click the Community Info tab, and now you're getting community information up here. The link changed, so now you can send them community information. If you want to do a local schools, right? You've got that information. You don't want them in two weeks to be like, hey, I wonder what the school system's like, and they go Google it. You want them to come back to your site and say, hey, school systems, I can find out all about school systems on my agent's website. Right? This is something that you can send out. These are some great links that you can send out to encourage them back to your website and show the value of using the system. So let's look, so this is a, a long screen. Here are some other things that you might find in the Market Insider that might be exciting. Comparison data, articles for buyers and sellers. So those people who, that 14% who were going online looking for how to buy and sell a home, Market Insider. Day five, listing alerts. Now if you haven't reached them by now, it's time to step it up a little bit, right? The idea of the seven-day plan of attack is not to keep on running them through all of this, but the idea is to engage them enough so that they're communicating with you in some format. And as you're communicating, you're moving them into different statuses. Maybe, um, you know, initially when they're going through the seven-day plan, you'd want to put them into a retry status, right? You're trying them again and again and again to see if you can engage and convert that person into, from a, from a lead, right, into an actual prospect or a client, right? They're just a lead right now. They're just a, a name out there. We need to convert them into somebody who knows you. So as we're going through these seven days, you've got them in retry. Once you start to engage them, if they go back to your site, great. Move them into active. Right? They're actively looking on your site. They know how to get there. They don't need any inform more information on how to access your site. They just need to stay engaged with it. So the listing alerts can be great because it gives you an opportunity to then turn around and start sending them information that might be valuable. And maybe they, all you got was, hey, they're looking in Bellevue, right? Hey, I wanted to touch base with you. I know you were looking in Bellevue um, on Trulia. I've got the most up-to-date listings um, on my website for Bellevue. Here's a couple of common searches. If you go to my website, you can set up something specific, or I'd be happy to do it for you. Is there a time when I can touch base with you and get the details around your search? Super, super easy to send that out and to put them onto a listing alert. And if you're still not reaching them at D7, if you haven't connected with them, getting them into the 10 Days of Pain. Now, the 10 Days of Pain campaign is really a campaign that's a couple different types. We've got activities. We've got emails. Moving them into the campaign like this, which is all around activity, it's customized activity that you're trying to engage your contacts with this customized activity. All right. So I promised you that we'd leave lots of time for questions today. And I, we've done a really good job. I'm actually I'm pretty, I'm pretty proud of this. 
today, really the focus I want you guys to come away with, I know a ton of you and hopefully everybody on the call is thinking about how they're going to take their other lead sources and now integrate them with their market leader system. And I just realized I didn't show you where to actually see the market leader lead section. Now, there's nothing that you actually have to do inside your market leader to connect and get those leads to populate into your system. It's all done in the other sources. But if you're wondering if your source is one that can connect, two weeks down the road when you're like, I remember listening to that girl, Allison, she was talking about connecting leads, and I haven't done it yet, but I do have some leads, go into your admin and go down to leads. And this lead section will tell you all of the current active places where you can supplement your market leader system with contacts that are automatically created for you. So you set it up on Active Rain, on Trulia, on Realtor.com, and those contact records will be created for you. Now, if you're still thinking, hey, I'm getting leads from other sources, it's not on this list, and I need to do this with my you know, import spreadsheet, something like that, absolutely. Feel free to do that. Importing your spreadsheet is in the contacts under Import-Export. The word of caution I have for you about importing your contact list is you want to make sure that those contacts have not been purchased. Okay, This isn't about um, purchasing a bunch of people who don't know you. Your market leader, would the ideal way would be that your market leaders for contacts who you've met or who know that you're going to be sending something, they've signed up somewhere else to receive information from you. Maybe you haven't met them, but you're, they've signed up with you. Okay? These, this is not the place for you to buy a bunch of email addresses and throw them into the account. You're going to do some damage. We don't have time to talk about the damage, but you'll do damage. Okay? So if you have a third-party website and you are getting leads in as an email, that would count as somebody signing up with you. So you would be entering their information or using this integration. Okay. Now let's take a quick peek again at what, what our focus is today. So we looked very briefly on the seven-day lead engagement strategy. Now again, like I said, if you're looking for a deep day, you want to know the strategy behind it, all the theory and how it works and you know, you want to look at the, the nitty-gritty. We have a fantastic webinar called 212 Degrees. We did it with Jack Markham uh, about two weeks ago, I think, two or three weeks ago. So you're welcome to listen to the recording of that. Um, and otherwise, you've got kind of this high-level overview of after you make that initial contact, what do you do after that to help engage that person? Right? That's the point of the seven-day lead engagement strategy. And once you've engaged them, you don't necessarily need to continue on down the path. Right? You want to customize it and move them into a different process. Right? Make it personal. This isn't about selling them. This is about becoming their resource. Be their Google. Google has this ultimate sense of trust that people have when they're doing their searches. We want them to feel that kind of trust with you as a real estate agent. And awesomely enough, we're going to be sending out some of these um, templates for you guys. So again, make sure that you're going to be um, filling out that survey so I can get the, the information from you. and. So you'll have some content to use in your initial response, and you know how to do it. Now, next week, I'm really, really excited about this. We have Maureen Bray coming, and she is going to be talking about all the things that you think you know about home staging, and is that really true? Now, we haven't done a home staging call in years, and so I'm just thrilled that we're going to be able to do this home staging call with Maureen. So I hope you guys are all going to be there, um, because it's going to be around why home staging is important, but she's actually going to be giving you some misconceptions and some tips and best practices for taking listing photos, right? This is above and beyond home staging, but how do you market that? Like, how do you create that, um, that beautiful picture that's going to resonate with your with your buyers, the buyers for this home. All right, everybody, we have hit the hour, and I am so glad you guys all joined me. It has been really, really fun. I'm really, really excited about this, and I hope you guys are too. I hope that you're going to be walking away with the, the goal of setting up your accounts to 
bring those leads automatically into your, your market leader system. So connecting your ActiveRain, your Trulia, your Zillow, connecting those accounts to your market leader contact manager so that we can create contact records for you and save you some time. Thank you so much. I hope you'll join us next week as well. Same great time, same great place for our call with Maureen Bray and staging. And with that, I want to wish you guys all a fantastic day and an even better week. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye.